We are with the eight-time national champion, Grandmaster Irina Krush, after a very important victory. Irina, welcome back to the show. This was a difficult game. Yeah. She was all over you after the opening. Did you feel the same way? Yeah, I mean, this was definitely, I think, one of my hardest games here. I mean, it's actually maybe the only game where I didn't get great position out of the opening. Um, I didn't feel like it was terrible, but maybe because my lack of knowledge of this line. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this move, she played d5. Um, I mean, I had seen that that was a possibility. I d just didn't evaluate the position as so bad for black. Like, I see the, the edge the computer is giving here. I definitely did not uh, think it was so bad. So uh, let's go, let's play a few moves. And, and, and it wasn't that bad, especially if she doesn't make the very precise moves such as a4 and yeah. things of that nature. I mean, it just seemed okay. Like. Uh, like her strategy was ambitious with d5, um, but you know, I have this blockading knight. I have a lot of problems to solve, like the bishop on b7 is not great. Um, but yeah, like I, I still felt like this, this part was okay. So the thing is that she, you know, I was quite, uh, I think I really should thank Nazi for playing very ambitiously in this game mm -hmm. because it was clear that, you know, she wanted to play it safer. She could have, she had many opportunities to do that. And the fact that she kept trying to beat me, you know, until the end, that's kind of like what backfired, right? Mm -hmm. It's what gave me some chances, um, you know. But yeah, she she really did try to win. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. You're talking about this moment when you like, play the move B five. Yeah, I mean, lots of moments. Like even if we go back a little bit, like you know, when she has this choice of which knight to take, right? Like uh, 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 right here after knight f six, right? Of course, you know, she could take an f six. And I mean, I didn't think actually, again, I didn't think this end game was a problem for me. I see, I was probably more optimistic about my position than the computer. Um, I guess I just thought my knight on d6 would hold everything together. And, um, you know, I, I didn't appreciate this plan a4 until a little bit later. Like I did actually, um, at some point in the game, I was like, oh yeah, she can take on d6 and just go completely change, you know, direction, go to the queen side and try to play against the b6 pawn and the bad bishop on b7. Um, but okay, yes, yeah, she, she had that option. Um, she went to take this knight and then a4. And again, you know, I never actually felt that I was doing so badly here, actually. So maybe that was good. Like, I was a little... Um, Optimistic about it. Yeah, I position. mean, I thought my position was okay to at least not lose, right? <laughs> okay. So um, we keep going. And this is a tricky move, rook e1. Yeah, and I played b5. So this was my first chance to really break out with that pawn and using a couple of tactics. Um, yeah, like for example, she could play c takes b5, right? Bishop takes d5, and you know, bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, and then actually she has this rook e5 move, which mm. I kind of underestimated when I first went for this line. And okay, I mean, I thought I had various, yes, queen d6 or queen d4 here. Ways um, to keep the balance. You know, even knight c4, yeah, either queen d1 or even queen c7, I thought maybe it could be doable. Um, yeah, so I didn't think I was going to be losing these positions, but obviously winning was going to be... Uh, it's not, it wasn't going to happen, <laughs> yeah. right? So, like here, she played the move f4, which honestly I didn't see at all. I thought it was very interesting move, very ambitious. Um, again, you know, creating problems for me in my time trouble, mm -hmm. right? Because I was already getting like kind of lower on time than her. And yeah, I mean, this move f4, of course, it's very double edged. Like you can you can lose after playing a move like that, but uh, I mean, okay, that's still far away. So she, queen e5. This, all of these were pretty critical moments, and I remember when she went for like knight e4. Yes. I mean, none of that was obvious to me at all. Like she played this move actually pretty quickly and I just, I didn't quite get it because it seemed like there were so many options and I wasn't sure what she was going for actually um, with this move. Like, so it, I was spending a lot of time just trying to figure that out. Knight takes and she's giving up a pawn, right? So. Yeah, she's giving up a pawn. And I mean, I always have this rookie eight idea. I mean, I, I guessed that rook b1 was her point. And actually, you know what I thought it was? I thought maybe she wanted to sack her queen at first after rookie eight. Uh, rook takes b7. Ah, rook takes b7. And, you know, because at first I was like, okay, then maybe that's not so clear. But then in this position, okay, I didn't see f5, to be honest. That's an interesting move. I was going to play c3. Mm -hmm. um, but at d6. least I realized, yeah, d6, that I can go either g, I can, like, start with g6 and then go queen d8. But she's not actually going anywhere with the pawn. And so, okay, like, I, I knew I wasn't losing in this position, yeah. which I, at first I thought, like, maybe that's her idea. Um, so then, but basically, if she doesn't have this, then her position is just not very good after rookie eight because 
Um, yeah, she played Queen F5. Interesting. Wow, I was doing that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, at this point, just take on E4 and Queen to E8. That was the computer's yeah, uh, choice. Yeah, and Queen E8. Which, Did you spot this uh, idea? You know, I had I had this idea somewhere, but I where is the mate? Am I? Oh, my mating with uh, Queen, Queen to Queen two. H5, Rookie two, and then that's what it is. Yeah, you know what? I just didn't see that I was actually mating. I mean, I saw these ideas, but yeah. Not and occasionally you don't even go for the mate, you actually just exchange the rooks yeah. and take the d5 pawn and that's just simply winning. Yeah, well, I'm not shocked. I have something <laughs> here. It was really complicated because, you know, we were both in time trouble in this yeah. part. Um, so what did I do? But still, what you did did not lose the advantage by any means. Yeah, else. and rookie too. I mean, I have to say I like that move a lot. Like, I felt like this part of the game I played pretty well because, you know, we were down, uh, you know, to the last minute on the clock and that's basically where I won and I was shocked you know that she had this transition to the losing the exchange because here I just thought I'm winning and and then suddenly she has this uh, she has d6 and I'm like oh I'm uh, I have to give up to my bishop <laughs> and thankfully thankfully this is actually com still completely winning because of the pawn yeah the pawn on f4 on f4 even with the pawn on f2 probably you're still winning yeah handily but this one is easy Irina a big big moment for you, a big game for you, because this one was a difficult one, and Jennifer Yu seems to actually be winning her game uh, against Begim. Tomorrow you face mm -hmm. Jennifer Yu. Yeah, that's a great setup, isn't it? it you is. can't ask for anything better. <laughs> I mean, if you want to win the tournament, you get to play uh, the person who, uh, who is um, in contention for first place with you. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I mean, this game, it's funny because I couldn't win all my winning positions mm -hmm. this tournament, right? But then suddenly you win a position that you really weren't supposed to win, right? And that's kind of like a very nice gift. Um, so I guess, I don't know, maybe that's the key to get worse positions or get yourself into some, some, uh, trouble. some trouble and then you have better chances to win, I don't know. Irina, we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow's game. Thank you. Irina, quick question, Anastasia. Yes, uh, considering the fact that you have not such a great score with Jennifer Yu, so mm. how, how does it affect your mood if it affects? Oh yeah, not at all. I mean, <clears throat> those kinds of things don't really affect me. Um, because, you know, you don't have a great score, that's just always a chance to improve things. And, um, and I remember when I first started playing Anna, um, and, and our first meetings, they were also not very successful for me at the very beginning of our uh, rivalry. But, you know, as you kept going, you, uh, you just have a chance to turn things around. So I definitely, um, I just feel really good about, about this game, winning with the black pieces against a strong player like Nazi. And, um, you know, I feel like, okay, I mean, I have chances, right? I'm gonna ha you have to remove the obstacles yourself if you're going to win first place, obviously. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy for this opportunity. Wow, that's a great attitude, something to Absolutely. learn here, yes, for, for all the rest. Thank you. Thank and you, good luck tomorrow. Uh, Irina, and very good luck tomorrow as the penultimate round. Well, wow. Uh, Looking the forward two, to this game. <laughs> two, two